Hi there everyone, my name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and in this video I'm going to talk through the very quick way and easy way of doing thematic analysis. Let's get into it. So what even is thematic analysis? Well, if you've ever had a bunch of texts or interviews or maybe even survey comments, we need to make sense of all of that information, particularly if you are doing a dissertation and you have lots of information. How do we make sense of that? Thematic analysis is a little bit like a data detective, and it helps you to find those patterns and themes that are coming up in that data. What are people saying? What are they rating? So it's a really, really useful tool to make sense of all of the data that you have. And what's the point of using thematic analysis over something else, maybe like content analysis or discourse analysis? Well, the main thing is it's really, really flexible. You can use it on any type of text-based based data. And it's really good if you're looking for general experiences, opinions, and views of a particular group of people. There are software out there that you can use, such as NVivo. Please do check out the video in the description about how to actually do it in NVivo. But you don't have to. You don't have to use complicated software to use thematic analysis. And one of its benefits is that it's not bounded by theory. There's different ways you could do it. Um, but we're going to talk you through the six-step process by Braun and Clark today. So often when we talk about thematic analysis, you might hear the term theme. And what is a theme? Well, a theme is simply something that is a recurring pattern or meaning in your data. Think of it a little bit like a main ingredient in a recipe, or it might be the key topic in a debate or a group conversation. A theme is more than just a word or a phrase, however. It's a representation of a recurring idea or concept or experience that's relevant to your research question. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the six-step process by Braun and Clark. Step one is one of our most intensive steps in this process. We need to reread it and reread it and keep immersing ourselves in the data that we have. So if it's a interview transcript, for example, reread it multiple times and ideally listen back to the audio as well. If it, you do have a video or it's something that you need to listen to, make sure you're doing that multiple times. It's all about immersing yourself and getting for a feel for what's there. But there's no pressure at this point in terms of making notes. We're just trying to explore the data and see what kind of vibes it's giving. Step two is where we start to code our data. Think of this as a little bit like building blocks for a house, where you're trying to break down your data into the individual sum of its parts. And here we need to go through our data and highlight or note down anything that you find particularly interesting, relevant, or important in relation to your research question. Now these codes should be relatively short labels or descriptions of bits of data. So for example, if someone said, I love how easy this app is to use, you might highlight those particular groups of phrases there, and you might highlight that and say, that's ease of use code. You go back through your data, if this appears again, you're gonna label that the same in a different transcript. And again, there are different ways to do this. You might use uses of color, you might have symbols, or if you're using software like in Vivo, you might use that system to code your data. So you want to go through all of your transcripts, all of your information, and code individual bits of data. Now that we've done this process, now we need to start to search for any potential emerging themes. So are there any codes that are similar that you can potentially group together? Are there any ideas that seem to pop up time and time again, are they related? And this is where our potential themes start to emerge. So can we start to group some of those codes under a particular heading? And that heading is gonna be your new theme. Once you feel like you may have some themes that you've grouped, it's time to look at them. Do those themes actually make sense in relation to your data? A common kind of issue that some students have and research in general is they'll place data and codes under a theme because that's what they want their data to say when their data doesn't actually say that. So do your themes make sense in relation to what your data is telling you? 
Can you start to group them? Is there a coherent story? Does one flow into the other? At this stage, you might be refining them. You might be combining some themes. You might be moving them around. Spend some time in this stage making sure that the themes that you've generated are the actual themes that are from your data, that they make sense and that they're clear. You're not going to talk about every single theme in your particular research piece, but it is important to kind of pull out all the themes that you've got, but also kind of indicate what key themes you might be talking about in your particular thesis or research piece. Step five. Now that we're happy with the themes that we have, we need to make sure that we've given that theme a very clear and concise name. Think of this, this is what your subheadings are going to be in your particular research piece. But you should also make sure you're writing a very short description about that theme to make sure that when you are writing it up, that your theme captures that. And finally, step six is actually writing this up as part of your report, which is typically in your results and discussion section. This is where you showcase your themes and typically your themes will be your headings and subheadings in that particular piece of work in your results and discussion. And it's your job here to showcase these themes by using example quotes and blending them with established literature. You're trying to tell the overall story about what your participants have said. Have a look for the videos in the description about how to actually present your interview data effectively. Stick around and I'm also going to show you a very quick example as well, if you'd like to see that. So let us look at this extract from an interview. Pause the video if you'd like to read it in your own time. But here is the example extract. I just love spending time at our local park. My kids absolutely adore the playground. They could stay there all day. It's genuinely peaceful, especially walking past the beautiful flowers near the entrance. We often have picnics there because it's such a great spot for it. As a parent, I feel it's so safe for families, which is a huge relief. You can really tell it's well maintained. The staff do a fantastic job keeping it clean and tidy. So from this, there are some potential codes that you could do from that, such as children enjoying the playground, uh, flora and fauna, about the flowers, about it being peaceful, picnics and recreation, safe for families, and it being relatively well maintained. From this, there are three potential themes that we could pull from. Theme one being maybe family-friendly fun. So for example, they mentioned kids love the playground, and it's safe for families. Theme two might be about natural beauty. So for example, the discussion around beautiful flowers or it being peace peaceful. And um, theme three might be something around excellent amenities and the upkeep of the park. So for example, it's great for picnics and it's well maintained. So following Vaughan and Clark's um, final step, is to report the data. So for example, you could say, Cliff, in 2025, evidence that many people enjoy parks due to their natural beauty and tranquility. This was supported by participant B, who comments that it's generally peaceful, especially walking past the beautiful flowers near the entrance. And that concludes this very quick video on how to do thematic analysis. Don't forget to check out the other uh, videos in the description and any comments you have, please do let us know and we'll be happy to help. Bye for now.